For centuries, humanity has looked at the moon as our silent companion, a barren rock orbiting Earth, lifeless and unmoving except for its pull on our oceans and tides. But what if that silence was never real? What if the moon has always been waiting for something something that would bring it to its right moment? In the last few months, the Interstellar Visitor 3 AI Atlas has already defied the laws of physics, vibrating like a living thing, splitting apart, and even sending signals toward Mars signals that appear to cause strange resonances. And now, something even more disturbing has happened. Astronomers tracking Atlas have established that directed pulses of energy were not only aimed at the red planet but also toward our own moon. In a revelation that has left scientists speechless, instruments on Earth recorded a reply. The moon, long believed to be dead and silent, has answered back. If you're fascinated by mysteries like this and want to stay updated as the story unfolds, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next discovery. The first extraordinary sign appeared when astronomers discovered a strange radiation outburst from Atlas. Unlike its usual pulses, which radiate outward, this one was focused into a narrow beam aligned perfectly with Earth's moon. Radio telescopes in multiple countries confirmed the event, describing it as an energy sphere that struck the lunar surface. Within minutes, seismographs left behind by old Apollo missions devices dormant for decades suddenly began transmitting strange data spikes. The readings were rhythmic, pulsing at intervals identical to Atlas's frequency. At first, scientists dismissed the signals as artifacts, random noise from outdated instruments. But then the pattern repeated, precisely synchronized with a second pulse from Atlas. The verdict was inescapable. The moon wasn't just illuminated by the energy it was resonating with it, as if something buried beneath its surface had been waiting to awaken. As days passed, the phenomenon grew more severe. Observatories recorded bursts of electromagnetic activity coming not from Earth's atmosphere but from the moon itself. These weren't just bouncing echoes, they carried variations, distortions, and signatures suggesting that the moon was actively modulating the signal. Amateur radio operators across the globe intercepted fragments of the resonance, describing it as a low, droning hum punctuated by sharp tones like a code hidden within static. Even more troubling, the signals contained harmonics that matched geological surveys of the moon's deep voids, caverns, and hollow zones within its crust. Some scientists theorized that Atlas's pulse had activated these hollow regions, turning the moon into a kind of resonant chamber. Others whispered darker possibilities that the moon was never entirely natural but designed to respond when called. Whatever the case, the evidence grew undeniable. Atlas had spoken and the moon had answered with a voice of its own. Reports from lunar orbiters soon added fuel to the mystery. Satellites circling the moon recorded faint but visible flashes of green light emanating from its far side the hemisphere hidden from Earth. These bursts coincided exactly with each pulse exchange between Atlas and the lunar surface. At first, mission controllers thought the flashes were reflections of solar activity, but the timing was to perfect, the wavelengths to consistent. Even more disturbing, the geometric patterns of the light resembled spirals and lines identical to the luminous structures already observed in Atlas's coma. It was as though the moon was mirroring the interstellar visitor's language, projecting it back into space in visual form. For the first time, astronomers began to consider the possibility that the moon was not just resonating but transmitting. Transmitting Atlas's signal outward, perhaps to other destinations, perhaps even to Earth itself. Humanity had always thought of the moon as a passive reflector of sunlight. But now, it appeared to have taken on the role of an active transmitter in a cosmic conversation. The most chilling moment came when Earth itself began to pick up the resonance directly. Radio telescopes in Australia, South Africa, and Chile reported structured signals arriving not from Atlas but from the Moon. The transmissions contained prime numbers, spirals, and harmonics unmistakably tied to Atlas's pulses but altered as though translated through the Moon's resonance. Civilians with homemade receivers began detecting faint tones as well, describing them as haunting, almost melodic vibrations humming in the night sky. 
At the same time, strange disruptions rippled through GPS systems, communication satellites, and even consumer electronics all registering interference in sync with the pulse cycle. Humanity was no longer just a spectator to Atlas's message. Through the moon, the dialogue had reached us directly, and assuming the moon was transmitting, then it wasn't just answering back, it was pulling Earth into the discussion. As scientists rushed to investigate the lunar signals, a startling discovery emerged from archives long thought irrelevant. Instruments that Apollo left behind, astronauts who had not spoken in decades, suddenly began transmitting irregular bursts of data. Their channels had been dormant since the 1970s, but they now beat in time with Atlas's rhythm. Engineers who tried to dismiss it as faulty hardware were forced to reconsider when identical readings appeared at a variety of landing sites thousands of kilometers apart. Even more bizarre, the signals contained patterns of binary code that matched prime numbers, repeating endlessly. It was as if these discarded devices had been reactivated not by Earth, but by something on the moon itself, machines that were never intended to transmit on those frequencies. For some, it raised an unsettling possibility. The Apollo missions had placed instruments in the right place at the right time, unknowingly installing the very receivers that Atlas needed to trigger the moon's response. Geophysicists shifted their focus to one of the most important and controversial claims in lunar history that the moon might be partially hollow. Seismic data from past impacts, including crashed rockets, had already suggested that the moon rang out in a bell-like manner for hours, unlike any solid body. Now, under Atlas's signal, the effect became undeniable. New data from seismographs revealed quakes that did not dissipate as normal vibrations would, but echoed endlessly, bouncing within the moon as though reverberating in a chamber. Each resonance pulse grew sharper, almost musical, perfectly in sync with Atlas's cycle. What scientists found most concerning was the mapping of the frequencies onto geometrical harmonics, structures of sound that mirrored the same spirals and hexagons seen in the green lights on the lunar far side. The moon wasn't just ringing, it was singing, amplifying Atlas's message as if it had been waiting for exactly this frequency to awaken its inner voice. Then the phenomena crossed the boundary between the moon and Earth. People across multiple continents began reporting faint green veils appearing in the night sky, far from the poles where auroras should exist. These lights pulsed, synchronized with the lunar rhythm, flashing as the Earth itself had become a secondary screen for the dialogue. Pilots circling the emerald-colored curtains, according to the Atlantic, glinting light above the clouds reported their instruments briefly disrupted every time the pulses peaked. Amateur astronomers noticed that when the moon rose over the horizon, the veils intensified as though the energy was being directed toward our atmosphere. The unsettling realization spread quickly. The moon was not just sending information back to Atlas. It was redirecting part of that resonance to Earth, pulling our planet into the conversation in ways no one had anticipated. Humanity had gone from observer to participant, and the shift itself was evident in the sky. Finally, orbiters passing over the moon's far side captured images that surprised even the most skeptical analysts. Amid the green flashes of light, vast shadows appeared across the lunar surface, not random in shape, but organized, arranged into enormous geometric forms that extended across hundreds of kilometers. Some resembled lines, others spirals, and one formation even mirrored the golden ratio perfectly scaled across craters and ridges. They were not natural shadows cast by terrain. They shifted at the same time as the pulses, as though projected onto the surface itself. When cross-referenced with spectrograms of the lunar signal, the shapes matched exactly, forming a coded written language of both light and shadow. For the first time, it appeared undeniable. The moon was not merely addressing Atlas, but announcing a message of its own, a message that humans could see, hear, and almost, but not quite, understand. And whatever that message was, it wasn't solely for Atlas. It was for us. As the moon's responses grew stronger, Earth itself began to feel the consequences in ways no one could ignore. 
communication, weather satellites, and even aircraft navigation systems started experiencing unexplained disruptions that lined up perfectly with the lunar pulses. GPS signals flickered minute by minute. Compasses spun erratically. In some places, surges were reported in power grids synchronized to the exact intervals measured on the moon. What unsettled experts most was the selectivity of the interference. Lunar surveillance by military satellites on the far side was affected first, as though they were the focus of the resonance specifically. Engineers tried to dismiss it as electromagnetic noise, but the patterns carried structure, repeating spirals and prime number sequences embedded in the disruptions.